This video will discuss the energy gradient and forces on atoms. So to start off, we have some potential energy, which is defined for a system. If our only variable in the system is x, then it's v of x. So if we want to know, well, if our atom feels this potential energy, what's the force that the atom feels due to that potential? And that depends on how that potential changes over distance. So f of x, the force that's felt by an individual atom, would be minus the first derivative of v of x with respect to x. So a specific example of this could be if v of x equals 1 half kx squared. This would be the potential energy of a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, which we have drawn over here. <clears throat> so we have, that's our v of x, so minus dv dx. If I can get the right color, let's see, minus dv of x dx, well, with respect to x, 1 half kx squared is going to be uh, kx, so minus kx for the minus sign. So the force that it feels is proportional to the dis displacement away from equilibrium, and it's in the opposite direction. So that's diagrammed here as well. So you see as the slope of the potential gets steeper with respect to distance, the force gets stronger and stronger in its magnitude as represented by these yellow arrows of the force and in the opposite direction that the particle was going. Okay, so that's one-dimensional. <clears throat> We're familiar with those types of one-dimensional systems. What if we go to three dimensions? So in 3D, our V of X will be V of X, Y, Z. So when we do our minus DV DX, in three dimensions, that will become negative partial derivative of v with respect to x times the x unit vector plus partial derivative with respect to y in the y direction plus partial derivative with respect to z in the z direction. So this, as you might notice from calculus, could also be expressed as minus del upside down delta, make sure I draw it the right way, minus del v of x, y, z. So this gradient is actually a vector, so we call, we're calling that the gradient vector. Or in this case, it's the negative gradient vector. So the negative gradient vector is the force vector that our three-dimensional particle feels. Now, how do we generalize that to, you know, n atomic, co uh, n atoms, or our 3n coordinates. So as I said, for n atoms, a general system will have some number of some number n atoms. We're going to have 3n coordinates, as each of them is going to have an x, y, and a z dimension. So what does that mean for v? So that means v is going to be v of x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, etc, etc, all the way up to xn, yn, zn, for however many n atoms that we have. Okay, so that means that our gradient then is going to be in general a 3n dimensional function. So our v there, <clears throat> some various shorthands that we can use to express that. We could say v of x1, x1 y1, z1 could form a vector called r1 x2, y2, z2, a vector called r2, all the way up to Rn, xn, yn, zn, a vector rn. And then sometimes we get even too lazy to write that, so we'll condense that all down into v of r to the 3n, where we just say r is some general uh, general spatial coordinate. You know, it could be x1, could be y2, could be zn, who knows. Just r is some general coordinate, and there are three n of them. Okay, so then that is our energy for a general molecular system, where our model has just individual atoms in it. And then for our gradient, we have minus del v of r3n, which gives us the gradient and then the negative of that 
gives us our forces. So these force vectors on individual atoms, depending on where the gradient points, might be something like this. It, might, it tells us what is the direction that that atom wants to move, which will be most quickly downhill in energy. So if that molecule were to just kind of be like a ball rolling downhill in this 3n dimensional function, what dimension would each of the, the atoms prefer to go? So you could get uh, some type of output like this where each of your atoms has in each x, y, and z dimension the magnitude of, of where they want to go, and then that gives us an effective direction for where the atoms want to go to go towards reaching a lower energy state.